Good morning from the Dolphin Resort. I am here today. Today is the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World. It is October 1st, so today I am heading to Epcot. Um, very excited. I actually got a uh, virtual queue boarding pass for Remy's, so I'll put a little clip of that here to kind of walk you through it, how to do it, but they made it so much easier now. When you go to the virtual queues, you actually pick your party before the time comes so when when it hits seven o'clock in the morning you can just hit refresh join and then you're good to go so way easier um i got boarding group 15 so i got a pretty low number so very excited for this um but yeah i'm looking forward to the day one thing i want to do today since i have absolutely no reservations today i have a 50 dollars gift card and my goal for the 50th is to spend 50 dollars in epcot throughout the whole day for food so breakfast lunch dinner Whatever, I have 50 bucks, so we'll see what we can do. But it's getting to be about the time I've cut open, so let's go. Food of the day, I got a berries and cream crepe from La Creperie de Prairie. It is the opening day of that as well, and I was the first in line, so this is the first crepe of the restaurant. So let's give it a try. So overall, I thought that crepe was delicious. Again, I got the red berries and cream crepe from the quick service location. There's a quick service and a table service location. It was $7.50 or $7.99 after tax. So Overall, pretty decent size, decent meal, decent, decent breakfast. So we'll definitely get, to get it again. Um, it was kind of tart, uh, less less sweet, more tart. Had some blackberries and raspberries and strawberries in there. But overall, yeah, very very good. But now it is time for me to ride Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. So I'm so excited, cannot wait. So I will take you on the ride with me. So let us go. Okay, the time has come. So I'm about to board Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. If you don't want any spoilers, go ahead and fast forward to the time I'm, I have in the bottom right hand corner of the screen because the next clip you see will be on Remy's Ratatouille Adventure.
Cut off Remy Fatatouille Adventure. Overall, it is a very cute ride. Is it as good as uh, Runaway Railway or Rise of the Resistance? No. It is also a trackless ride, just like those two. Um, but in general, this is originally from Disneyland Paris, so it's a little bit more outdated of technology. It was very, very recent of the time when it was developed first in Paris, but they did not change it at all to come here, which is kind of, I, I appreciate that. I also like how they kept in the um, French dialogue that kind of adds to the feel of Epcot. So very, very cute to see that. It, w it was it was a very cool ride. Um, it is 4D, which I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was just going to be 3D, so that was kind of nice to have some 4D effects happening. But there were also some times where the ride just like kind of stopped and it felt like the ride was breaking down and nothing was happening. So that was a bit strange, but overall we'll do it again. I would just say don't expect the level of Rise or Runaway Railway coming into it because your expectations might be, you might be over expecting things. So just kind of lower your expectations or kind of manage your expectations for going on the ride. But now it is time for some more snacks, maybe some, maybe a coffee. So I will see you in just a bit. Okay, just finished up my shake and Jamaican cold brew from the Joffrey stand. Now heading over to the Creation Shop to see what kind of 50th merch they have. Oh. <laughs> 
Here's a look at the 50th anniversary collection merchandise. And once this is gone, it is gone. So I don't know how long this stuff will be staying around, but yeah. Okay, and now time for my merchandise haul from today. So first things first, I got one of the reusable bags. This is the medium bag, and this was $2.50. So perfect little size for the 50th, and I love the Mickey and Minnie on the, on the one side and the castle on the back. All the different size bags have different designs, so one thing to note, the small one is Tinkerbell, but this medium one had Mickey and Minnie on it. And this was, again, $2.50. As for the pins, I did get one of each. So this is the pass holder pin, and this is the non-pass holder pin, both of which are specific to today of October 1st, 2021. And these are both $17.99 each. Next up is the ornament, and this is $25. And as you can see, it is special for the day in the 50 and the zero. It does say October 1st, 2021, with the castle and fireworks. And then on the back is the world's most magical celebration. Next up, I got myself the pass holder shirt specific to today. So it is like a kind of like a heather gray, like a darker gray. October 1st, 1971. Pass holder 2021, October 1st, Walt Disney World. It is kind of like a gold foil. Um, it seems like a pretty nice shirt. And I do like for the tag, all the 50 of the shirts have the 50 logo on the tag, and they're all tagless as well. So. Very, very nice to see this. And this one was $39.99. And then the last item I got for the 50th merch was the mug, which I thought it was pretty cool and much cooler in person than the picture gave it justice. It is a fairly decent size mug too. Um, but I liked, I just liked how it was, the coloring was and everything. Um, and this one was also $25. Hey, so I have gone to the creation shop, got my purchases. I'll go through what I got uh, when I'm back in my <clears throat> the room later this evening. Overall, it wasn't too bad, like a 20 minute wait. Then I went over to Club Cool, um, which was also a 20 minute wait. So I got to get some uh, samples from Cokes from around the world. So that was very nice to do. I haven't been in there since they reopened that, so that was cool to see. Couldn't really film in there too much because couldn't balance the camera and drink since it's just me today. Uh, but then I came up to the front of the park to get some pictures, and actually right over my shoulder here is a pretty cool picture they're doing, the like tiny world. We've done it before in Galaxy's Edge, uh, but they're doing it here now, which is kind of cool. So that picture turned out, I'll put it right here. But yeah, so now I think maybe heading up uh, Spaceship Earth and then getting some snacks for the day. And now time for some lunch. Here I have the cowboy macaroni and cheese from the Mac and Eats booth. Basically macaroni and cheese with some pulled pork and burnt ends and barbecue sauce and pickled jalapenos on top. So it looks very good. This one was $6.25, so let's give it a try. That is very good. The mac and cheese by itself, it's a very, very creamy mac and cheese. There's a nice heat to the barbecue sauce alone. The jalapenos are kind of a wash. I don't really taste them too much. I got a little, little piece in the bite that I just took but the meat just kind of falls apart. Um, yeah, overall, great dish, uh, definitely worth $6.25. I might be going back to this one a different day, for sure. But yeah, and I do see that it's right over my shoulder, I don't know if you can see it in the picture or in the video, but it is one of the golden statues. So I'm gonna finish eating this and then check out all the gold statues here. Because for the 50th, there are 36 gold statues across all four parks, showcasing 50 different characters. So there's quite a few here in Epcot. I think this is the only one in the Future World section. Um, and most of them are by like the port of entry for the World Showcase. So finish eating this, then we'll check all those out. Okay, first some perspective. Spaceship Earth is right in front of me now, and World Showcase is right behind me. So I'm kind of on the bridge to World Showcase. And here is the first golden statue, and it is Figment. So these are very, very large. Um, well, larger than I expected. He's probably maybe three feet tall. He's got the 50 emblem in the front, but very cute. And I believe the, the remaining statues are all in the middle of the port of entries here in the World Showcase. So first up, we have Pua and Hey Hey. Very, very cute combo there. Next up is Olaf and Bruni from Frozen 2. Bruni, this is from Frozen 2. And then here we have Rocket Raccoon and Baby Groot. 
And then lastly, we have two statues here. We have Miguel and Dante from Coco. And just to kind of give a perspective of how large these things are, there is the lamppost kind of right next to them. And yeah, these things are massive. So I think that is all the statues here in Epcot. I will double check on that. And if there are more that I find, I will be sure to put them in here. But overall, very, very cute. I don't know if these are going to stay around for longer than the 18 month celebration, but at least for the 18 months we get to enjoy them, so very cute. Okay, now there is something in the Norway pavilion that I want to see if I can get in. Um, so I'm going to go check it out real quick and I'll let you know. So there is a new experience here at Akershus in the Norway pavilion. They have a Florida Blue lounge, so if you are a Florida Blue member or employee, um, it is a free lounge for you to come into but they do have a guest pass you can get as well. I'll put that link in the description down below. But you come in here and you get a choice of two snacks. So I chose some grapes and some hummus. And then you get a sparkling water and they have regular ice water up for you to get as well. So a nice little way to get out of the heat. And this is totally free. Okay, so I needed to get out of the heat for a little bit and I was getting pretty thirsty. So I went to the apple seed orchard to get a cider flight. So from left to right, it is the Collective Arts Brewing Circling the Sun Hard Cider from Ontario, Canada. In the middle is the original Sin Hard Cider from Macintosh, New York, New York. And lastly is the Blake's Hard Cider Company St. Sherry Bourbon Barrel Aged Cherry Cider um, from Armada, Michigan. And I will say I am glad I got the flight because if I would have gotten just one, I probably would have picked the bourbon one since I am a bourbon fan, and I like the uh, bourbon barrel aged beers. Um, so I think I'm gonna give this one a try, but I think of the three, that was my least favorite. It just tasted very medicinal. I don't know if it was the bourbon aspect for the cider, or it being cherry, or what it, what it was, but it, it, that was not my favorite. Um, if I had a rank, then I would say the original Sin one in the middle was my favorite. It was just very crisp, crisp, kind of on the sweeter side, the first one wasn't bad either. Um, not very sweet, but had more of the flavor of apple, I think. Um, but yeah, overall, would definitely get the um, flight again. It's a good deal. It's $9.75 for the three. I think they are like $4.50 each. So it, it is the cheaper option just to try three different things. But of the three, definitely would not get the Bourbon Burrow H1 again. But glad I got it. And now on to our next booth. Okay, next snack item up is from the Brazil booth, and it is the Pau de Queijo, or the cheese bread. Now, I wanted to try this because they have a very similar menu item at the Skipper Canteen that we go to all the time, and really loved it there, so I wanted to give it a try. It is much bigger than the one at Skipper Canteen, so pieces are bigger at least. So, curious to see how this is, so let's give it a try. Flavor is exactly the same as Skipper Canteen, Texture-wise, it's a mix of the cheese and the bread. Very, very good. Um, the one thing I do miss that Skipper Canteen has, this one does not, is the sauces. Um, so would have liked to have seen that, but it, it is still very good otherwise. $4.75 for the two pieces, so it is a bit pricey for what you get. Um, I don't think I'd get it again. I would just get, this, get it at Skipper Canteen since I like that one better with the sauces and you get more little pieces. But overall, very good. Very nice little appetizer for my my um, dinner for this evening. So finish up this and then on to the next snack item. Okay, next up, I wanted to try this earlier, but I didn't see it till after I checked out when I got my coffee. So I stopped at Joffrey's again to get the uh, 50th anniversary blend coffee, iced. And this is the uh, coffee that's from the beans of the Cerrado region of Brazil, Santa Barbara in Honduras, and in the Costa Rican Central Valley. Uh, with notes of blueberry, black cherry, and a subtle hint of lemon. So, it seemed kind of interesting. I figured it'd be better iced than it would be hot, um, but let's give it a try. Overall, very good. I just got mine black, um, but it is a dark roast, so it's very, very bold, very robust flavor. Um, the fruit aspects don't really come through too much. There is a kind, kind of a hint of all the fruit, but it's not overpowering at all, so I was hesitant earlier because I'm like, I don't know how blueberry lemon coffee would be, but it's really not too overpowering, so I would definitely get it again. Yeah. So this is a good, good choice. This was, I think, like 3 
60 or something. Um, I'll put the price down below. But yeah, overall, good, good uh, snack option. Good drink. Okay, next up from the Kenya booth is the Kenyan coffee barbecue beef tenderloin with a mealy pap and some kachumbari slaw. So let's give it a try. This was six dollars. That is delicious. Um, this might be my new favorite thing at the festival so far. The barbecue sauce or the barbecue aspect of it adds a nice like layer of sweetness. Um, the, the mealy pap on the bottom that it's on the, that the beef is on top of um, is kind of like a grit texture wise. The beef is very tender. Didn't get, didn't get any slaw that bite, but could probably do without the slaw. It is pretty oniony and like vinegary kind of is the complete opposite of the rest of the dish. But overall, very good dish. Decent sized portion for the six bucks. So highly recommend getting this one. So I'm gonna keep eating this and then on to our next snack. On second thought, I think I'm gonna skip the dessert for this evening and just kind of hold my spot for Harmonious because it's, it's a pretty good view I have right here. I'm right on the railing, so nice little spot I have. So I might just wait it out here for uh, the three and a half hours until the show starts. So quite a long time, but we'll see what I can do. I'm right next to the America Gardens Theater, so I should have some entertainment playing pretty soon. So this will have that to, to keep me occupied. But yeah, so next up you'll see some fireworks.
the human spirit. Set the song inside you story and the whole wide world will hear it. Okay, so I am back in the car after my very packed day at Epcot. So overall, I was shocked by the crowd level. I saw kind of pictures and posts from Magic Kingdom today and it looked insane. So the fact that like Magic Kingdom for merchandise at the Emporium, people were lining up at like 6.30 this morning to just join a virtual queue to get in the Emporium. Whereas I waited 20 minutes at the creation shop and got the same stuff. So, not really sure why it was, I mean, I know why it was such a big draw, but it just seems insane that people would go to that length when you could go elsewhere and get the same merchandise. And it's not like it's going to be going away soon. The 50th merchandise, it is limited, but, uh, and the cast member did say that once it's gone, it's gone. But at least here in Epcot, there was plenty on the first day. I don't know how long it's going to last, but there was plenty. Um, as far as the rest of the day, I was excited that I finally got it to, got to go into uh, Club Cool. So nice to see that. Nice to see that all the flavors except for Beverly are brand new. So that's nice and fun. The Probably my favorite one was the actual juice, not the soda. Um, I think it was from maybe Korea. I'll put in down below if I was wrong, but it's the apple lychee or lychee, however you say that word, uh, juice. Very, very good. Very just refreshing. Um, but yeah, as far as my food for today goes, um, my favorite by far so far the festival has been the Kenyan coffee barbecue beef tenderloin. I think overall that was just a very nice, complete meal. Um, second place would actually be one that I had yesterday that I didn't record myself eating, but it was very, very messy. But it was the uh, Sriracha Glazed Donut Chicken Sandwich from the Donut Box. This thing was massive. It is more expensive. It's $8.50, but it is a huge sandwich. So we'll get that again. Um, and that's only number two because of it being so big for the price. My number three is also a very, very close number three, and that is the cowboy mac and cheese that I had today. Um, only reason that's number three is because for six twenty-five or six seventy-five, whatever how much it was, um, I'll put that down below as well. I think I would have liked more. It was a very small portion, very, very good though. So that's the only reason I put that at number three. But overall, I had some fantastic food today. Um, and as far as my budget goes, my $50 budget for today, I did cheat a little bit because I got the free snacks and drinks at the uh, Florida Blue Lounge in the Nor Norway Pavilion, and the sodas at Club Cool was all free. So, did cheat a bit there, but I did come in under budget. I think I have $4 and some, and some change left, so I'll kind of tally up on the side here um, all I spent for today. But overall very good day as far as harmonious goes so i actually saw this last night as well and tonight i did record it both times um from two different vantage points and i will say that i think the projections are only on the circle facing the front so if you are anywhere else in the world showcase you won't be able to see those projections which is kind of a bummer um because i always like the fact that the epcot shows you can stand anywhere on the lagoon and see the show exactly the same as everybody else. Whereas for this show, it's kind of like you have to be on the front or the back to see the circle. And apparently only the front has the projections. So that's something to note. I did think that seeing it from the back today, the projections in the circle don't really take away from it. Like without having them there, it didn't take away from the show itself. So there is that to note. Um, but I would still recommend being in the front of the back, not on the sides. 
which is a bummer because the two restaurants that are, or the couple of restaurants that have the dining packages are the UK, the Rose, Rose and Crown, um, the Spice Road Table in Morocco, and the uh, Hacienda de San Angel at the Mexico Pavilion, which are, which are all not going to be straight on, so you wouldn't have the view of the circle. So something to note, and those dining packages are more expensive, so you don't get a great view. Um, so something to keep, keep in mind. As far as the show itself, I like it for what it is. You kind of have to go into it knowing that it's not a firework show. It's like that's not its big feature. Um, it's a lot more of a water show, and they do rely on the, on the screens quite a bit. There are fireworks still. I think comparing it to past shows, personally, I liked Illuminations. I know a lot of people did not. Um, I did not like Epcot Forever as much. I liked the concept of Epcot Forever, but watching it, all of the fireworks that were very, very low to the ground caused so much smoke, so it was just a very, very smoky show. At least this one, the fireworks were all up higher, so that's one thing to note. This is similar to Illuminations, Illuminations being more like a laser show, this is more like a water show. So that's kind of a cool aspect to it. It's very different. And I feel like the best one to compare this to is actually Rivers of Light. So Rivers of Light never really worked out how Disney planned it to. I think it was a great idea in concept, um, but the wind would always mess with the um, water screens, and we see this at the at Fantasmic as well. Like the projection, the projections on the water is never super clear, and I feel like this show does the projections and the water features well and this is what rivers of light should have been if they did this kind of aspect with the barges how they have it now with the rivers of light floats going through that would be a phenomenal show um but in its current setting it is still a very cute show my biggest complaint with it is there's a couple times where just like there's a mini finale and everyone starts clapping and then it just starts up again like there's a there's a pause between it i don't i think like the the music is a lot more new stuff but they don't connect the, the songs very well there's there's it's very disconnected um but it's still a nice show would i stay around purposely to see it today i waited three and a half hours to to watch it from my point of view um i don't think i would do that again like, if I'm in the area or with other people that want to see the show, then sure. Or if I'm in Epcot and it's like, oh, the show starts in 20 minutes, then sure, I'll wait around. But I don't think I would wait a couple hours if I'm already done with my day at Epcot. So, personal preference, but that is what I have to say about that. I will say, though, more than the show, if you stay around after the show, they have the fountains going um, with like the lights and everything. It's very colorful. And I like that a lot better than the show itself. Like I, I would like to see that. I loved what they were doing with Spaceship Earth, how those lights were, were going crazy throughout the day too. That needs to stay. I, I, that give me that as the nighttime show and I'm in. Put some music to that. That's great. That is the feature that draws me to the show. I like the colors, I like the water features, and yeah. But I'll post the whole, a link to the whole show, because um, I'll post that before I post this video. So I'll link to that video above. But yeah, that'll do it for my day here at Epcot. And now I'm about to head to my, back to the uh, hotel. And tomorrow I head over to Magic Kingdom with some breakfast at uh, Steakhouse 71. So very excited for that. And I will check, with, check in with you then. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we will see you real soon.